Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you may be. Welcome to Good Measure. My name is David and I'll be your host today. Today we have Ken Gibbs, Executive Mentor at Adweek. He's here today to talk with us about social media, privacy, and a little bit about how the digital landscape is changing. Ken, thank you so much for being here with us today. Do you mind quickly introducing yourself to those in the audience who may not be familiar with you and your work? Great, David. Thanks so much for having me. Um, for those who aren't familiar, I'm Ken Gibbs, um, a 20 plus year digital veteran out of the New England area where I began my career with Henry Louis Gates. I've had leadership stints everywhere from AOL, Time Warner, Viacom, CBS, Prime Video, Spotify, Urban One, Essence, just to name a few. Um, and as you mentioned, I'm a mentor member of the Adweek Executive Mentor Program, um, part of the inaugural Social Media Council for Adweek, as well as a co-host of the Art of Storytelling episode out here in New York and throughout the country. Mm -hmm. All right. So starting off, how did you get into this industry? And specifically, how did you decide out on going like this sort of route that you went on? Uh, so it's interesting, right? It's a little bit of a convoluted path that involves uh, passion as well. So I originally went to school for English and communications um, with a minor in African American studies. Um, and that I, I'm aging myself, but I was in school right as the dot com bubble was inflating. So mm -hmm. even though um, I was writing, it was like, wow, uh, the path in publishing is a long one. Um, it wasn't very diverse at that time, despite all the all the noise that the urban magazines like 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 sell the source and vibe were making at that time. And the internet really presented itself as a quicker way. Um, mm -hmm. in terms of a path to publishing. So I started yeah. looking in to the web, um, is teaching myself HTML, what have you. Um, and through the startup, I got into AOL, where we had um, AIM, AOL Instant Messenger. And I often mm -hmm. say like that was really the beginning of mm -hmm. social networking. And as I was focused on conversion, right, getting people to the website through Intel mm -hmm. Outreach to generate those CPMs and what have you, I followed the audience as the way to connect and communicate with them evolve mm -hmm. through social media. Mm -hmm. All right. And so speaking about like following the audience, like right now there are a lot of companies that are focusing on leveraging social technologies just to make their product better and to engage with communities uh, a lot. And so are there any companies that you really think are doing a good job with this right now? And just what is your sort of outlook on the digital landscape at this moment? It's interesting, right? Um, so I don't think there's necessarily a playbook of how a company can connect with the community online through the right way. Mm -hmm. I think the method in which you connect, the quality of that connection and really what's going to serve as an authentic connection for you is largely going to be dependent on the nature of your product. Right. Mm -hmm. I think you can look at one end of the spectrum where you see fast food, right? And mm -hmm. simply taking pictures of burgers and fries or talking about your menu would not be the most compelling or thumb stopping thing in the timeline. So as a result, the fast the fast food category seems to have, I think, the most leeway, right? In terms of mm -hmm. what to talk about to connect with customers on yeah. an everyday basis, because everyone is eating, right? All mm -hmm. the way over to media companies. Right. Mm -hmm. Media companies who during this creator era right now kind of find themselves looking more, I think, for partnership mm -hmm. with the creators and the audiences as well. And so I think that there's a wide gamut, but I'd like to say that I've got a few favorites. Right. One of my mm -hmm. favorites is is Wendy's. Like, I just love the comedic biting tone and the willingness mm -hmm. to go out there and engage directly with the audience. And I think it's genius because the tone that they use on social is the antithesis of the pigtail logo that they mm -hmm. have, right? They've got a sweet logo, but a biting voice and personality. It's sweet yeah. and sour. It's perfect. Mm -hmm. um, but I also think if you look at brands like, um, you know, Netflix, right? Mm -hmm. I know from a stock perspective, Netflix might be going through their things, but I think from a media perspective, Netflix has really kind of led the way in terms of transforming how you engage directly with your audience as a media company. And mm -hmm. I think the um, so best example out of their portfolio of that is Strong Black Lead. All right. Um, in terms of a social property is connected to an organization, but also speaks directly to its audience. I think Strong yeah. Black Lead, uh, the name itself is telling the audience, we know what you're looking for. Right. Mm -hmm. It's not Netflix Black. 
yeah. and strong black lead, what that black audience is looking for. So those are two mm -hmm. of my favorites and I think yeah. great examples. Yeah. And so speaking about social media, th there have been companies such as Meta that have been actually getting into controversy recently for attempting to copy sort of not exactly brands, but sort of technologies that have been used by companies such as TikTok. And what do you think this means for companies and their consumers? And do you think that brands should stick to what they're known for and in innovate through the avenue? Or should they follow what what we know as a surefire method for gaining clicks? Well, I mean, I think, uh, so that's a complicated question, right? Because I think at the root of it, you'll discover that even though all of us are on social media all the time, and it seems like it's been here for so long, um, in comparison to other media forms, like we really just scratched the surface. We just did mm -hmm. our toe in this, all right? And in the media space, who doesn't copy mm -hmm. from one another? Not even yeah. just in the media space, but in the corporate space, period. Right. Um, I, I think that's quite a common trait. But I think when you talk about the heat that they're coming under right now, if you're looking to copy TikTok, mm -hmm. what's I think most interesting to me about that is it proves how savvy the social audience at large has come, has become in less than a decade. Um, mm -hmm. This this outcry wasn't as loud when Facebook blatantly copied and everyone else blatantly copied stories from Snapchat. Right, mm -hmm. um, in terms of a format, even though there are other nuances there, Snapchat being more so about messaging as opposed to publishing, so mm -hmm. not really going to generate that type of chorus that you're hearing around this. But yeah. I think in general, innovation is hard, mm -hmm. and we're seeing that first firsthand right now yeah. with some of the forefathers of social media like Facebook and Instagram struggling to keep up with new entrants. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and speaking about keeping up, um, how are companies nowadays sort of adapting to a digital landscape where more and more people are actually valuing their digital privacy and the privacy of their own personal data? It's interesting, right? This is very interesting. I think it's also something that points to the growing schism between the software companies, the platforms, and the hardware themselves, all right? I mm -hmm. think as people become more comfortable with social activities and just have an expectation of all things being social or taking social um, engagement into consideration, you're going to see more and more of those capabilities exist natively within the devices themselves and allowing people to share with the people that they want to mm -hmm. um, at scale on a personal level yeah. as opposed to being forced to fork over their data and create content that's going to populate a platform from which they don't really give much compensation or any compensation mm -hmm. right um, and contributing to it so i think that's something to be be mindful of as well mm -hmm. and so speaking about contribution um how do you think this privatization of data actually means for creators and the creator economy itself and how it will sort of affect the ability that creators have with engaging with their audience? It's going to be interesting. Right? I think right now creators have it somewhat easy despite, you know, uh, frequent changes to the algorithm that will force them to change their tactics. Mm -hmm. They're still able to kind of, um, you know, ride this highway that's been offered to them by the social platforms in order mm -hmm. to connect with their audiences. Yeah. I think as private, the, the you start to see more guidelines and restrictions around data privacy on these platforms, mm -hmm. making it a bit more difficult for yeah. the target audience of the influencer to be targeted. The mm -hmm. influencer is kind of gonna find themselves almost back at square one in the traditional media world, right? Mm -hmm. Where audiences are creating content, but then also coming up with large campaigns, many of which are out of home and leveraging other avenues to get in front of their target audience, as opposed to having that very granular data that we enjoy now on some platforms to target people based on interest, habit, mm -hmm. geography, and those other things. Yeah. And speaking about creators, there's often the talk of A-listers and the influence that they have on the younger generation. And as you said in an interview in 2021 with Dennis Guarda, there are 24 letter, more letters of the alphabet and the internet is sort of enabling us to connect with our communities in ways that we've never seen before. And so how are newer technologies enabling this? And do you think people who are not A-listers will gain more and more influence with technology? 
Definitely. I mean, one thing to be mindful of is that whoever was an A-lister in the past had been chosen by a very finite amount of gatekeepers, right? Mm -hmm. uh, whether those be directors, editors at publications, uh, showrunners, or what have you. I think right now with the ability for literally everyone to create, publish, and share their mm -hmm. content, their perspective with the world, I think you're going to see that term almost, it won't vanish, all right? Because mm -hmm. I think it, it speaks to something larger in terms of, you know, what is the difference between an artist and a content creator, mm -hmm. right? What's the difference between a thought leader and a content creator, all right? Mm -hmm. um, if you think about at a very basic level, when you just look at most influencers right now, yeah. Uh, most influencers find themselves uh, spending their time growing their following on platforms that are largely visual, right? Mm -hmm. YouTube, TikTok, Instagram, right? They're yeah. active. They put a lot into the, well, not a lot, but you're cognizant and being considerate of the production mm -hmm. value and your yeah. visual style there, right? That's mm -hmm. not going to be for everyone. You know what I mean? And hey, let's be frank. Yes. Some people have a face for radio, Right. Mm -hmm. um, and if you do, but you've still got knowledge and experience that audiences and communities will benefit from, I think mm -hmm. now that's where podcasts come into play. Yeah. Right. Podcasts, on demand audio, whether it's um, Twitter Spaces or Spotify Live or Facebook audio, many of these things as well, I think, mm -hmm. are going to allow that uh, A list category to expand to other people who have value to offer. Mm hmm. And speak about speaking about expansion. Uh, around a year ago, I believe, um, in an article by Adweek, you actually talked about how augmented reality has the potential to help marketers engage with fans. And do you view some of these new technologies, such as Web three, coming out similarly and in, in a different way? Do you think that Web three has the potential to really help marketers and and companies engage with communities? So I think. I think it, the potential is there, yes. Mm -hmm. How long it will take that potential to be actualized at scale is mm -hmm. a different question, yeah. right? Um, but at its core, I totally believe that Web3 offers innovative marketers the opportunities to make moments, right? Mm -hmm. That will impact audiences who are savvy enough to truly engage with all of the aspects of Web3 right now. Again, mm -hmm. it's not at scale. I doubt my mother would even know what an NFT is, yes. right? Yet still, if you make that moment, it will resonate across the platforms that she does understand and engage with, right? Articles mm -hmm. written, Facebook posts, all of these things. So I do think it's an opportunity. And mm -hmm. I do think, although it might not be readily consumed at scale right now, that mm -hmm. excitement, curiosity, and interest is something that can help a marketer easily amplify a message. Mm -hmm. All right. And as we go more and more into the digital age, is there just anything that you really hope will stay in the form that it is in in the in person form that doesn't go digital? Hmm. Conferences, I'd say. I uh, I know I spoke earlier about how you know the audio realm is really opening up at the opportunity mm -hmm. or creating opportunities for thought leaders that can't really succeed in the visual space to gather. Mm -hmm. And I think you saw some of that during the the early and the mid days of the pandemic during the clubhouse boom for yeah. instance, uh, where many thought leaders were getting together and doing essentially what is a conference in that regard. Mm -hmm. um, while those things might be good to listen to if it's extremely well moderated, um, I do think we lose a lot by not having the actual physical interaction of people in a room getting to really understand one another at many different levels. Because uh, the one thing mm -hmm. to be mindful of also with audio is that it creates a theater of the mind, right? Uh, where we're listening and assuming as we go along and mm -hmm. uh, human beings, life is a 360 uh, picture, right? It's, mm -hmm. it's audio, it's visual, it's sensory as well. And as we look to make better experiences for some of the new platform, I think it's really mm -hmm. important that we stay engaged on a physical level so that we we don't lose touch of what it is that we're trying to recreate virtually. Mm -hmm. All right. And so moving forward, for do you have any advice for the people who want to sort of follow in a career path similar to yours? Uh, be curious. Be curious and have fun, quite honestly, um, I think. And don't look for a path. 
Mm-hmm. Right. I think what everyone's got to understand right now is we are truly in uncharted territory on many different levels. Uh, like I said at the onset of this, I began my career as an English major. Um, and then the communications double major in African American studies, right? I just mm-hmm. happened to like web pages and taught myself HTML. And ultimately, that the internet and social media and all of this became a career opportunity, right? Mm-hmm. I think that that situation or scenario is going to remain the same or a viable for the foreseeable future. Right. Mm-hmm. When you look at how technology is changing us so quickly and how we are revisiting even old problems of right mm-hmm. now. Right. So in, you talked about Web3. Yeah. There's there's a lot there in terms of the possibility, but we need curious people to think of new ways that that technology can help and impact our lives. So mm-hmm. I'd say and that's the first the first thing and my best piece of advice. Um, I started out on Web pages. Right. The internet is not about converting traffic to web pages in the ways that it was like in 1999 to 2000. Yeah. All right. Awesome. Uh, do you have any closing things that you would like to tell everybody? Any plugs? Anything before we end? Uh, one thing I will say: uh, check me out on all handles um, at K. Uh, that will speak to the movers and shakers in the digital and social space uh, and uh, that are uh, are you able to, I just got a it kind of blipped on my end so I want to make sure I think, it's still good on you I think um, I think you cut out a bit on the um, you, you said you started to like say um, the link I, I believe for okay yeah I got I got a notification on my end that my internet was unstable so I'll start over on that part there. Um, but yeah, we'd just like to say that everyone should follow me across all platforms at, at Ken Gibbs Jr. Um, also be on the lookout. I will be releasing season one of a podcast that deals with uh, people of color who are movers and shakers in the digital social space as well. Mm-hmm. And if you're on LinkedIn and you find yourself in the New York area, definitely give me a follow. I often... Um, promote and announce the date for the art of storytelling our series at the soul house there and if mm-hmm. you're in the city i'll put you on the guest list if you're not a member of the club so we can come by we can meet in real life mm-hmm. all right thank you so much great great thanks again for having me baby.